first of all let's take a tour of the interface and see exactly what you're going to be using to create your scrap logs in the very center you've got the page where you do all of your main editing and just about anything you can see here when you load a theme in you can grab you can rotate you can resize the only rule here is if you can see it you can grab it and you can edit it everything is up for grabs it's really really simple so that's the main page let's talk about how you get things onto the page and that is through the assets tray which is over here on the left the assets tray gives you the option to bring in your photos from a number of different sources it also gives you the chance to scroll through and select stickers that you can drag and drop and resize and customize on the page you can grab backgrounds from the backgrounds tray you've also got different ways of adding text speech bubbles thought bubbles all in the main text tray there are different shapes that you can create designs with by adding patterns and different levels of transparency you can bring in online videos straight from YouTube and you can even bring in frames which you drop onto your photos and resize as you edit them up at the top of the screen you've got some nice chunky buttons that you can use to publish your scrap blog to the web save your scrap blog if you're not quite ready to share it yet and even load in a preview so you can get an idea of exactly what it's going to look like when you do publish it then right up at the very top you've got lots of advanced menus that you can use for a number of editing purposes such as adding new pages, duplicating pages, deleting the page that you're currently working on. You can also add various editing features such as a grid to help you with layout. You can add snapping, zoom, lots of different features there. This is also the place where you can send out invitations to invite people to come and check your scrap log out. Down at the bottom of the screen, you can quickly look at the different pages of your scrap blog by clicking on thumbnails. So if you click on each page, it will bring up that page in the main viewer. So this is a great way of just being able to really quickly navigate through your scrap blog. You also have options, for instance, to add a new page, which will create a completely new blank page for you to work on. You can drag in a background and start bringing in your photos with a completely blank canvas. Alternatively, if you're not happy with any of the pages that you've got, just click on delete and the selected page will be deleted. Now if you want to copy one of your pages, that's also really easy. Just select the page you want to copy and hit duplicate and that copy will then appear at the end of the sequence. So here's the first one, here's the second one that I copied the third slide and now at the end of the sequence is the copy of the second slide so that's a really easy way to be able to make variations on a particular layout you can also resequence the pages so all you have to do is click on these up and down arrows and that moves them up and down in the sequence that they'll be displayed in your slideshow On top of that, you can add transitions between each of your slides and we've got some really great looking transitions. Each of them can be previewed by clicking the preview button and that shows you exactly what it's going to look like when someone's watching your slideshow on the web. There's a good range of different possibilities, all with a different distinctive look. And the great thing is, you can apply them to each individual slide or alternatively you can apply them to the whole presentation if you just want to have one type of transition between each slide no problem finally if you want to add music that's no problem also set background music gives you a range of different pre-recorded licensed music that you can use lots of different moods to suit all different occasions and you can play through these right in the browser to have a listen to the one that you think is going to work best for you now as I said before, anything you can see on the main page, you can edit just by clicking on it, dragging it around, resizing it, rotating it, all those things that we've looked at already. Now if you want to add more advanced features and more advanced editing, you can use the contextual menu situated over on the right. This gives you the chance to change all kinds of things, like the border of the photo, which I've just increased there. You can change the drop shadow. You can also change the reflection by adding that directly to the image or turning that off. You can cut, copy and paste, you've got unlimited undos and you can change the stacking order of the pictures bringing them forward and backward. So there are lots of different options available from the contextual menu that you don't have directly in the main page. The contextual menu isn't just for photos, you can also apply various contextual effects to the stickers also. So if I click on this watermelon you can see that I can change the opacity, I can add a link, I can also change the drop shadow. So there's lots of different contextual features for just about anything you can see in Scraplog. 